right, in today's episode, as you should have seen from the title, um, I'm going to be talking about motorcycles. <laughs> so, always when I was younger, well, not too much younger, maybe 10 years ago before my life was started and I've gotten nowhere still, but I always envisioned maybe after college, you know, I could get some money and build up and get a house and... I always had dreams of having, like, a multiple vehicles, too. Not, like, outrageous. Like, I always thought, like, a truck for winter purposes. Maybe put a plow on it so I could plow my driveway instead of need to shovel it. Um, it would also be for, I mean, if I had a house, maybe there's big things that I'd buy or something. So, you know, the bed helps. You don't have to have a company transport, transport whatever you bought for you. You just throw it in the back of your truck and carry on. Like, say, a new fridge or something. Um, so that's what I thought for the truck. I always thought of having like a daily driver car, maybe like something that I have now, you know, I just have a basic Nissan Altima. So that's like perfect for a daily driver though. And then I always thought about having something a little nicer, you know, maybe like, you know, an Audi A8 or, a, I don't know, a, a, a CT6 Cadillac or, or something juicy, you know, a big Jaguar, just a nice like weekend car from going out with family or something. It's just a nice comfortable ride, a comfortable vehicle, enough space, just everything. It looks fresh when you go out. Um, and then I thought this is kind of like, yeah, not really a priority, but I just thought it'd be kind of fun to have like a project car, you know, get like some kind of old piece of crap, <laughs> like a, I don't know, a 98, uh, civic or something stupid, not civic. I don't care about civics, but you know what I'm trying to say. And, like, just beef it up. Throw some rims on it. Lower it. Get a paint job. Throw on a body kit. Get a good system in there. Uh, do all the weight reduction nonsense. Put, like, those cool bucket seats in there. Take out the back seats. Get rid of the spare tire. Um, all of that. You know, just have something cool and get it all spiced up and juicy. And, like, hey, I made this car. Well, sort of. You know, made it to what it is today. How it looks and stuff. I just thought that could be kind of cool. Um, and then also, yeah, I thought about like having an actual good, cool, old fashioned car and a nice, like, you know, some kind of muscle car from the mid to late sixties, you know, <laughs> with the raging offset cam, super loud pipes. <laughs> and then <laughs> I always thought maybe a bike too. Now I'm not really, I'm not a Harley guy at all. Harley guys are their own category. You know, they're all about waving at each other and wearing those clothes and having those big beards and bandanas and all kinds of weird nonsense that's just not a, my style at all also the bikes themselves seem to be more about um being obnoxious if you will rather than any kind of performance like if i ever got a bike i'd want it for performance so i'd want like a street bike you know something that you hop on and within a matter of seconds you're going 60 <laughs> so yeah that's what i always thought but then, things started to change, and I thought, you know what, maybe I would never actually want a motorcycle, because there's actually a lot of reasons that motorcycles are kind of terrible. <laughs> the first one was, I just thought about, like, seasons, like, I, technically, you can ride your bike year-round, I've seen people do it, you know, it's the middle of winter, and they're all on their Harleys, and it's like, um, are you serious right now, like, it's freezing, and you're just casually on your bike, oh, my face has frostbite, this is cool, <laughs> But if you're a practical individual instead of an idiot, you're really only going to ride, you know, take the bike out like late spring, then you have it all summer, and then early fall, it's still warm enough that you can take it out. Otherwise, the thing just sits around. So that's like half, what, three, that's about maybe five months out of the year. You know, you you put it away by late October, maybe you take it out late, maybe late April, possibly better would be May. So let's just say May. That's May, June, July, August, September, October. Okay, so you got six months. You got half the year. But still, the other half the year is just sitting there. And then I feel like that's just like a sunk cost. Like, do you keep it on the insurance? or And you keep paying for insurance for something that you're not even using? Or do you take it off the insurance? But then every six months, you get a call. Oh, can you put it back on? Can you take it off? Can you put it back on? That's just annoying. Also because it's not used all the time, six months out of the year, it's just sitting somewhere taking up space. So most likely you got a garage for it, you put it in the basement or something, but still, that's just a thing, just taking up room for six months, just sitting there, no need to, no purpose to move it, no need to move it, no nothing, because you're not going to use it. You can't use it when there's, you know, snow and ice and all that crap all over the road. 
So I'm like, maybe bikes are super impractical. And it, wow, I came out weird. Super impractical. Especially in my area, New England. You know, maybe if you're like in Florida, it could be okay, I guess. Because then the, the weather is kind of pretty temperate year round. But up here, nah. And that's just a small thing. Then I start to think about slightly bigger things. I'm like, okay, what if you do take your bike out? Say, you know, you're going to go to work and it's nice and warm in the morning, sunny. And you're like, oh, this is great bike weather. And if it's this good now, it'll be great later. And then later it rains and you're like, oh, F. Now it's like you go out after work, your bike seat's all wet. The, well, the whole thing's wet, but the seat would be the worst. That's what you're going to sit on. So now your clothes, like for me, I'm, I work uh, business casual. So it's like now I'd have like my dress clothes getting all wet. <laughs> because my bike seat was wet um and then like you gotta ride home in it and then i just think about like the splash up like you know like when you're on the highway behind a trailer truck and it's splashing up you know it's making like that mist all over your car well in a car it's no big deal you turn the wipers on you carry on but if you're on a bike that's just all over you and that's gross like water off the road it's not even like at least rain so now you get all that nastiness on you, and it's just like, ugh, I wouldn't want to deal with that. Um, there's also no storage on bikes. Well, there can be. You know, I've, there's the bikes with the saddlebags. But a lot of times, if you have saddlebags, it's kind of ugly. Bikes look cooler when they're just the bike, the sleek bike. You put the saddlebags on, and it just ends up looking, I don't know. I mean, sometimes the saddlebags are kind of cool. They look good if they're small enough but see then if they're small now you have no storage so it's like you either want the big ones for some storage or you just have these small tiny ones that hold nothing but they look better at least the car you got all this storage in the world well not really but you know what i mean if you don't have any passengers you get the whole back seat you get your trunk if you like really if you really have no passengers you even have space in your front seat to put stuff i mean that's my situation most often <laughs> most often times i don't it's just me driving so i got my whole entire car to put stuff in but yeah um what else just trying to think of the smaller things before i get into the bigger issues that i think about <sighs> raining or, or even that never mind raining what if it starts snowing like you're an idiot and you take your bike out when it's kind of cooler it's like 40 degrees you're like eh, it'll be a chilly ride but it's manageable and then it ends up snowing after work and now you get a ride home in the snow like ugh, no thank you <laughs> I don't know, but then I think about, I start to think about bigger issues, like, uh, on a motorcycle, you only have two tires, so this is something I've never experienced in my life until recently, and that's a tire blowout, I've never experienced, uh, technically I have, actually, it was on a bus ride to Virginia back in 2009, but, I mean, that was the bus driver, he had to deal with it, and I didn't even feel anything, we just pulled over, and I was like, what are we pulling over for, and then after I saw, you, know, you could see him outside jacking the bus up to take a tire off, and I'm like, oh, we had a blowout, okay, but he didn't feel anything, I don't even know how he knew, maybe there's a sensor that told him or something, I don't know, then again, he is the driver, so maybe after driving a bus for so long, you notice when something's off, but anyhow, me personally, I had a blowout back in July, I think it was like early july i think late june early july somewhere around there it was a summery month but uh yeah never had that happen ever before never happened in any of my parents cars never happened in my vehicles before never happened with my brother so i never experienced it before and it's actually not as bad as i thought then again my blowout was a back tire maybe a front tire would be way worse i don't know but um yeah but i'm just thinking like what if I was on a motorcycle? You have two tires. I'm sure... That wow, was loud and weird. I'm sure any tire, any one of those tires blows out. And that's a huge issue. I mean, you only have two. And, you know what I mean? Like, I'm saying maybe it wasn't as bad because it was a rear tire. I, I guess also I wasn't even really going that fast when it happened. I was near a light, so maybe I was going like 20, 30 miles an hour. Maybe if I was on the highway, the rear blowout would have been like, Whoa, what happened? But regardless if you're on a motorcycle even if you are only going 30 and you have a blowout that's i don't imagine that that's gonna go well most likely you're gonna end up dumping the bike because you got two tires and now one of them's out of commission <laughs> um and then it made me start thinking about other things like okay do you have a tire blow what about a deer runs out in front of you 
uh, in a car, look what can happen to a car. A deer, if a car hits a deer, the car a lot of times can be, to- not a lot of times, almost every time, it's totaled, okay? And the deer's dead. But at least the person, to a certain extent, is okay. If you have your seatbelt on and all that, you, you could be okay. You walk away unscathed or mildly scathed if you have anything. But on a bike, what's going to happen on a bike? Like, you're just plowing into that deer, oops, and you're flying over the handlebars, landing in the road. The deer's the one now that's living. Now, I'm not saying anybody should die in an accident. You know, poor deer's when a car hits them. But I'm just saying, this in this situation, the deer's the one that lives, and you're the one laying on the ground like, uh, uh, uh. So I'm like, yeah. I don't think, uh, I, I don't know, I don't know. I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want to hit a deer in general because I don't want to destroy my car. But, you know, if it's going to happen, I'd rather be in the protection of a car than on a bike. The other thing is, you might say, well, I'm sure on a... Well, hold on. I'm sure you might be able to say on a bike, well, you could probably avoid it better than in a car. Because, you know, I've heard people say, like, the experience when you're on a bike is way different than on the in a car. You can drive on the same road every day for 10 years in a car. And then the first time you get on a bike... It seems so much different, is what I've heard, at least. So, you might say, yeah, well, if you're on a bike, you'd be able to anticipate that deer better. You might actually see it. You might hear it or something. You know, you're on a smaller vehicle, so you can swerve better to avoid it, yada, yada. Maybe. But at the same time, I feel like animals are dumb. They always dart out like squirrels. There'll be a squirrel standing on the side of the road. I'm like, just sit there, just sit there. And all of a sudden, the thing starts booking it, like, when I'm right next to it. And I'm like, deer, are you serious? I mean, squirrel, are you serious right now? It doesn't get hit, but I'm like, why would you choose to run when I'm right here? You have, you have a very slim chance of living at this point if you keep going and end up under my car, stupid. So anyways, I feel like deer possibly do the same thing, dart out at the last minute, and then, you know, pfft. So normally they'd just be slamming into your car. But if you're on a bike, they're basically T-boning you. <laughs> and... How much does a deer weigh? I don't know. It's probably not too heavy. I was going to say, it probably weighs more than you and the bike combined, but probably not. How much does a deer weigh? I don't know. I'm just, I've never been deer hunting or anything, so I really have no idea. But I'm just thinking, uh, you know, a lot of people do do that and they bring the deer back home and they skin it and eat it and stuff. So I'm like, well, it's light enough that you can get it into your truck and stuff. You know, it's not like if you were hunting an elephant, you'd need a whole team to move it. So, but anyways, yeah, the thing's going to do enough damage if it's, you know, 200 pounds, say, plowing into you. It's got to be more than 200, right? They're kind of big. I don't know. But anyways, yeah, so I'm like, ooh, I don't want to deal with that. Um, And then there was another situation that I had. This was a few years back, actually. This was 2017, maybe? Um, I was on the highway behind a trailer truck, whatever you want to call them. I call them trailer trucks. Maybe you say tractor trailer. Same idea same thing that we're referring to you know potato potato (laughs) but anyhow so I was behind a trailer truck and (coughs) it kicked up a rock and it slammed right into my windshield and cracked it now obviously because of how windshields are designed and stuff they don't shatter they just and, and, and and then you know you're exposed to the air and everything they just crack but still I had a good size crack in it and I had to call up my insurance so then I could get that replaced. It was free because of my insurance, so that's cool. But still, I had to deal with that, which they did it while I was at work, so it really didn't affect me at all. But still, you know what I'm trying to say. Um, but it made me think, what if I was on a motorcycle and that flew into my face? Say, you know, I'm, say I was wearing a helmet, but I'm wearing one that's just covering the top of my head, like back to the Harleys, like Harley guys do. I mean, I feel like if I had a motorcycle, I'd probably get one of those ones that are, like, a full face mask just because, I don't know, just it would make me feel better. But what if? What if I just had a regular helmet on? Or not even wearing a helmet. Just going brave, you know? Maybe it's hot. I'm like, I don't want to wear a helmet. I'm going to be all sweaty and gross. Ugh. So, anyways, yeah, I'm like, what if that flew into my face? I mean, look what it did to my windshield. What would it do to my face? Just made out of flesh and bone. <laughs> or what if it flew and hit me in the chest? Like, even if that thing flew, you know, that's at least a projectile going 140 miles an hour. You know what I mean? Say I'm going 70 towards the truck and the truck is going 70 in front of me. You know, that's 140. It's kick up speed plus my speed towards it. So that's 140 miles an hour. A rock is flying at me. That's going to hurt. I'm not saying it would kill me. I don't think it would go through like a bullet because bullets, their speed is ridiculous. You know, it's like 
500 feet per second, which is, I don't know what that is. I mean, a mile is 5,280 feet. So you're talking 10 seconds, the bullet went a mile. So miles per hour on a bullet is really high. But, um, yeah, I don't know. But so the rock's not going to be like a bullet flying at me, but it's going to hurt. It's going to possibly rip up, rip me up a little bit. Like if the thing hit me right in the cheek, say that's going to rip my cheek right up. So I'm like, oh, it's potentially dangerous. Like I don't, ugh. I don't want to be trying to go to work and a rock flies up and rips my face up. <laughs> There's also the other aspect, you know, they always have the motorcycles are everywhere, pay attention for motorcycles and blah, 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 always those bumper stickers, and it's like, yeah, it's because you're small, so, like, cars don't readily see you, trailer trucks don't readily see you, they got so many blind spots, they don't see a bike, they, half the time they don't see cars, never mind a bike, so then there's that as well you gotta deal with, like, I almost feel like being on a bike, you have to be way more uh, uh, on alert when you're cruising around, just to, for your own safety, I get it, a lot of people don't do that, they're stupid and they expect everyone else to pay attention. Oh, you should be paying attention that I'm on my motorcycle. Nah, you should be paying attention, bro. You're the one on the motorcycle, not me. It's not my responsibility for your safety, stupid. <laughs> but that's how people are. I mean, for me, I'd be at super high alert. I'm, so, I'm at super high alert most times just in my car, especially in winter, because I know people don't pay attention. So I'm, I'm always trying to look in my rear view mirror and see if there's any cars creeping up on me that are like, you know, sliding on snow or ice or something and about to rear end me. <laughs> so if I was on a motorcycle, I'm sure I'd be even higher alert. Like, is this car trying to switch lanes and not noticing me? Is this a car that's... I don't know, creeping up behind me, paying attention. Do they think that there's just a vehicle and they're going to hit into me because, you know, I'm a little gap bike, you know, car, bike, car. But if they don't see me, they're going to end up hitting me. So, but anyways, yeah. So I just think about that too. Like there's that danger. Um, and then the other thing is not only that, but bikes can be super dangerous like just think about any time i've thought about this my whole life if you got into a crash you know you can easily get all ripped up from the road burn and stuff and then you gotta get skin grafts and it's just like man super life altering all because you wanted to have a motorcycle and it's like was it worth it though in the end Mm, i don't know yeah maybe it was fun all those times but now you you look like a burn victim and you're all you know you're all messed up and this is forever Or if you didn't have the bike, you wouldn't look like this. You'd still look normal. So it's like, I don't know. Like, there's somebody that... There's some people, I should say, not somebody. Some people that I know that have a motorcycle. And they like to go take it out all the time. I mean, the the guy basically drives it every day in summer. Which makes sense. Because I feel like motorcycles are probably more fuel efficient and everything. They're they're small. They don't weigh anything. And for the most part, they have one passenger. So... (laughs) You know, you put a gallon in, you probably can get, like, 60 miles on that. I don't really know. I'm just guessing. But, anyways. But the thing with this guy is, I don't know if he's just reckless, doesn't pay attention. Maybe a combination. I don't know. But he seems to get into some kind of accident every year. And most times, though, he's lucky and he's able to get out of it. Yeah, maybe there's damage to the bike, but he's typically fine. Well, recently, they've been into an accident. And, uh, yeah, this one was way more extreme. This one was pretty bad. I mean, there was two passengers. There was two people on the bike, him and his wife. Um, Him, he ended up getting a broken leg, among other injuries. I mean, the broken leg seems to be the least of the worries. (laughs) He also ended up with... uh, Apparently, his ear got ripped off when he was sliding on the road. So they found it, and they reattached it. And I guess other injuries to his face happened. So I haven't seen him. I don't know personally. But apparently he's very stitched up on the, in his head, face regions. And then, like I said, he's got a broken leg. And um, I guess I don't really know what the heck is happening, how this makes any sense. But apparently he got some kind of infection or something. I, I forgot when, there, when, some, when somebody was explaining it to me that's a little bit closer to them and, and knows you know, more detail than I do. Um, they, they said it was something, how do I phrase this? It almost felt like it was something 
the way that it sounded is that it was some kind of illness that they have, but it's been latent all these years. And then this accident caused it to activate. And now it's this person, this guy needs to go to the hospital literally every single day to get a round of antibiotics because of this act, this, uh, infection flaring up. I I can't remember what they said it was called. I can't remember full details. Really the only detail I do know is he has to go to the hospital every single day to get a round of antibiotics because of whatever happened as a result of this crash, which is just weird. But anyways, point is, is that's pretty bad alone right there that you got to deal with, you know, looking kind of scary, possibly with all those stitches and stuff, your ear being ripped off, like all bad things, broken leg, got to live. I don't know how long this antibiotics are supposed to be. I don't know if this is for the rest of his life now, like a diabetic with insulin, or if this is going to eventually clear up the problem. But I know for now, he has to go every day. I mean, literally every day, weekends too. But anyways, that's his injuries. As far as his wife, it is way worse. Um, basically, in a nutshell, they the hospital was projecting that she was going to not make it and pass uh, sometime soon. Um, obviously, she's still alive and made it through that point where they thought she wouldn't. But that's how bad it was for her. They thought that she wasn't going to make it. But yeah, her injuries are... I mean, she's in the hospital for now, obviously, and who knows how much longer she will be because her injuries are pretty bad. Um, so, yeah, it's just like, again, maybe you had fun on your bike, but look what happened. Is this all worth it? Like, you're all screwed up right now. And, I mean, for her, I, I don't know what the true situation is. There's the potential that... She might not even be able to walk anymore. So it's like, is that really worth it? That you now are, I guess you could say a paraplegic. I mean, she's still got functionality of her arms, but I don't know. I think her legs, she might not be able to walk. I don't know. And it's just like, yeah, I don't think riding a bike is is that worth it when this is the potential dangers that you could be facing. Um the other thing is she has a lot of broken bones that the hospital for some reason isn't choosing to fix because their logic is well they'll heal up on their own but it's like well yeah but how are they gonna set are they gonna heal up right are they gonna heal up weird and then what's that gonna cause just raging arthritis and stuff from a weirdly healed bone and ugh, i don't know does not sound pleasant at all and there's also she's also had an onset of what's it called bell's palsy bell bell's palsy what what's the word cerebral palsy bell's palsy right i don't know the 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 situation where half your face droops that's what she had going on last i knew so it's like i guess that's not so bad in the grand scheme of things i mean i knew somebody who had bell's palsy from a young age and i mean you know it's it's not that big a deal. Yeah, okay, half your face doesn't work, which is weird, but it's like, well, things could be worse, you know? Like her bigger situation, like how I said she might not walk anymore. You know, that's, that's much more of a problem than having Bell's palsy. I mean, if I had to choose, hey, do you want to never be able to walk again, or do you want to have Bell's palsy? I'd be like, well, I'd rather have neither, but I guess out of the two, I'll take the Bell's palsy. But anyway, so yeah. As far as their situation, all their accident, it's like, well, it's kind of hard to determine because, like I said, he gets into an accident almost every year. Or not an accident, has some kind of a wreck on his bike every year. I've seen one of them happen either. It was at a gas station. There's a Dunkin' Donuts across the street. And I was at the gas station just finishing up getting gas. And um, <laughs> they were leaving the Dunkins. And then I didn't, I didn't see it, see it, so I don't know the full chain of events but somebody hit him so i don't know if he was trying to cut someone off and just wasn't quick enough and they t-boned him or if this person wasn't paying attention when he was going and they t-boned him i don't know all i know was i heard a noise you know it was the motorcycle rev well first you heard the hit then a motorcycle rev and i didn't realize it was an accident at first i thought somebody was trying to show off and then i see the butt and then i see the bike and like a car and then i see him laying on the ground i'm like holy crap wait a minute i know that guy I'm like, what the, what, 
what just happened? And then I see his wife running over because she was still at the Dunkin's. I don't know why he was leaving without her, <laughs> but she was running over. And I'm like, what the, what the heck is happening right now? <laughs> so there's that one. Then they told me about a story about one that happened, you know, a, a state over that they got into some crazy, you know, dumped the bike and it was all crazy. But they got out, you know, scot free. And it was like, well, the way the accident sounded, it was like, geez, you guys got away with nothing wrong with you. Like, that sounded crazy. Like, they're going like 50 miles an hour and then like dumped the bike because they were trying to avoid something that was in the middle of the road or something. They swerved too hard, bike tipped. The thing went sliding, but they were somehow fine. I'm like, that's weird. How did you end up making it out of that perfectly fine? That sounded vicious. So, anyways, my point is, is on this recent accident, I don't know, maybe it could have been avoidable. Based on his track record, he does crash quite a bit. So, but um, from what I do hear, um, basically the accident was caused by somebody else not them i guess what it was is they were going around a corner it's kind of like a blind corner and this guy was backing up with his trailer and uh he had somebody in the road to help like not direct traffic but you know keep be like a watch out like hey somebody's coming so apparently he didn't do his job and tell his buddy that they were coming and so the guy continued backing up and i guess um they saw that he was still coming so then they swerved to try to avoid him and avoid getting clipped but then i guess what happened was the trailer basically hit the um right rear hindquarters of their bike so basically it was like a pit maneuver not obviously an unintentional pit maneuver but that's basically what it was kind of like to best describe it it's like a pit maneuver an, an accidental pit maneuver on their bike and so it caused them to uh to uh end up dumping the bike not to change topic here but like i said i usually make these while i'm driving now, i'm on this side street trying to go to the place i always go to when i make these and it's a dead end it's it's a few houses and then their business and that's it and there's a car pulling out of one of these houses trying to go this way to their, their business direction. But I'm like, what? this doesn't make any sense. If you needed to go down here, A, just walk down here. Why would you drive down here? But B, um, why else would you go down here? There's nothing down here. There's, it's, it's a dead end. It's businesses and then trees. <laughs> I don't understand what they're doing. So yeah, I guess they were basically T-boned and, uh, oh, not T-boned, pit maneuvered. And so, yeah, it made them... Uh, obviously dumped the bike which led to all this craziness however actually let me get back to this in a minute this new idea i just had anyhow so this story also has been um i guess you could say proven because they looked at the bike well somebody else went that knows them and went and looked at their bike to see if there if there's any evidence of their story holding up and i guess there is a black smudge in the rear corner panel of his bike now the black would be from the trailer that they saw obviously they saw the house as they went to the scene as well because they were trying to find ironically some dentures <laughs> but anyways yeah so they saw that there was black trailers in that yard and um yeah and so the bike is uh what's the bike now he's always had a bunch i think his bike now is light blue um, his coolest one was his purple one. I don't know why he got rid of that one. And the light blue one's kind of, eh. Because, like I talked about, it has ugly saddlebag things. They're, they're plastic, which blends in with the rest of the bike. But, like, they're just too big. So it looks kind of stupid. But anyways, yeah. So obviously there's no reason to have a black smudge on a light blue bike. Unless the trailer hit it. Now, obviously they couldn't go in the yard and check out the trailer to see if there's a light blue smudge. Like if they traded paint. But at least that black smudge kind of co co what's the word collaborates co cooperates with that story i don't know what the word is i'm looking for but uh yeah now at the same time though i also heard that he was going a little bit too fast for that region which you know based on his history of getting into accidents i'm like well maybe maybe that's the case and that's why he crashed because what i was also gonna say with um uh, what was I going to say now, actually? I forgot. With when he got T-boned like that was... Oh, yeah, how, the, how their injuries are. It's like, well, I feel like 
if you're going a reasonable rate and you got t-boned like obviously somebody backing out of their driveway isn't like flooring it and going you know 75 miles an hour backing out of your driveway i mean you're going top speed 10 miles an hour maybe even that that might be too fast actually you're probably going five miles an hour backing out of your driveway so that means even if he did get um i keep wanting to say t-boned but it's not it's, it's more like pit maneuvered <laughs> So even if he did get pit maneuvered on his bike, going five miles an hour, that's a light tap. For them to have the extreme injuries that they had, he had to have been flying because those injuries have to be as a result of his side of things. You know what I mean? So he had to have been going maybe... I know they're on... Obviously, it's a residential type area. There was a house. So maybe he was going highway speeds on this road. Maybe the speed limit's only supposed to be 40 or something. And, you know, they got tapped five miles an hour... Uh, back rear quarter panel boom i mean right rear quarter panel boom and then you go flying off your bike (laughs) at 65 miles an hour and then boop there goes your ear there goes your leg there goes all these other severe injuries because if he was i feel like if he was going at normal speed say he was going 30 35 around the corner and you got tapped by something going five miles an hour first off you might not even dump your bike but second off it would just be like a little swerve possibly you know just the, whoa we got hit <laughs> so i don't know i also think you know again like i said he's always getting into crashes so was he really paying attention did you pay attention to the guy that was i don't want to say directing traffic but you know for lack of a better word directing traffic maybe he just wasn't even paying attention and so maybe that guy was i mean he shouldn't be directing traffic but let's just say he he was trying to to help his buddy get out he was like hey slow down i got somebody backing up and then he just wasn't paying attention flies around the corner here comes his buddy backing up slams into him because he's thinking his buddy's controlling traffic from him for a minute who knows i don't know the investigation's still open i guess they're the, the police are supposed to take like a month to do a thorough investigation I don't know if that's how it always goes, that they need a full month or what. And I heard that, and I was like, you need a full month? That's weird. Why is it exactly a month? <laughs> but anyways, yeah, so I don't know what the, their final findings are. But all I do know is, you know, there's those are some extreme, intense injuries. And, yeah, it just makes having a bike look very unattractive. Because then I always thought about this. I thought about how if you have a bike and you get into a crash, you could have some very bad injuries. And I'm like, okay, there are ways I guess you could try to minimize some of these injuries. But then it just kind of defeats the whole purpose of having a bike. Like, you could wear a lot of leathers and stuff and have a good helmet on. But I'm like, I almost feel like the whole point of a bike is so then you're out in the open air. If you're going to wear all these leathers and have a full mask helmet on and stuff and leather gloves even and all that so you're fully protected. I mean, on one hand, great, you know. That way, then, if something bad does happen, you're kind of trying to cover some of your bases. Obviously, a broken leg's still going to happen. doesn't matter if you have leathers on or not, but at least you can mitigate, like, road burns and stuff. You know, maybe if he had a full... I don't think they. I don't think he wears a helmet. I'm pretty sure his passenger does, does, but I don't think he ever wears a helmet, so that don't help. But maybe if he had a full head helmet, you know, the one with the face mask and all that, well, your ear probably wouldn't have gotten ripped off because you would have the helmet scraping on the road instead of your bare head. So, you know, there are some measures you can do to make things a little better for you. But at the same time, it's like dressing up in all leathers and all that so you can be safe on your bike. It's kind of like those people that wear pants and long sleeves and and, and sun hats and stuff in summer because that's the recommendation so you don't get skin cancer and all that. It's like, okay, I get it. Skin cancer would suck. Any kind of cancer would suck. But at the same time, like, you're really going to not properly enjoy the summer and and wear all these clothes and be super hot and sweaty all the time just because oh well now my skin's covered and safe i don't know you know what i mean kind of defeats the whole purpose and then at that point if you're gonna wear leathers and a full helmet and stuff you might as well just be in a car because now you're probably feeling hot you're all leathered up in the middle of summer you got a full helmet on so you're not really getting air at least in a car you have the windows down you're getting air or you might have the ac on so you're nice and climate controlled so yeah I don't know. Like I said, I used to think about possibly getting a bike if I had a house and all that. I mean, I'm nowhere near that. I have one car and I live in a tiny, kind of dumpy apartment. So, like, these are just dreams that are probably never going to be realized, which is very frustrating to say. 
but yeah, um, I just feel like <laughs> I feel like the 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 risks and disadvantages of having a bike like severely outweigh any benefits. Which really, what would be the benefits? Just like the uh, an experience, so it's a little funner. I don't know. Is that it? Like it's. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, there is somebody at my job who doesn't have a bike and doesn't ride, but her husband does. And she talks about the experience when they go out together. Like, it's just, you know, you can smell different things and everything looks different when you're out on the bike. She talks about, like, in the fall, they'll go up to New Hampshire. And she's like, oh, it's just, it's such a different experience than if you run up in your car. And it's just so nice. And, I don't know, she makes it sound like being on a bike is awesome. Like, it's just so much of a better experience. And maybe it is. But all those risks don't go away. You know, your tire randomly blowing out doesn't go away. Somebody T-boning you because they're not paying attention doesn't go away. You know, the weather changing and getting crappy doesn't go away. Like that. I think about that. You go up to New Hampshire, then what happens? You're up there, it starts raining, now you got to deal with that. Obviously, you didn't take a car with you. You took your bike. Now you're stranded in the rain, and you got to ride your bike in that. Like, ugh. I rode a bicycle before in the rain one time coming home from work when I was much younger, and that sucked. And and I was a kid, at least. I was probably 15, 16 years old, so it was something I felt like I just had to kind of deal with. I wouldn't want that same experience as an adult on a motorcycle, like an idiot. Well, I'm an adult. I shouldn't be all soaked right now from the rain, but I am because I'm dumb and took my bike out. (laughs) So, yeah. I thought I had a lot more to say. I've been, I've literally been planning this video <laughs> for months now. I've been thinking about it and I just haven't done it because A, I haven't had to ha- take any trips out to this company to get parts. And B, it's been summer. So even if there was any trips, I don't do it in summer. I don't make, I don't make these in summer, to forecast in summer because typically I have my windows open and it's just too loud. It's windy and then I don't want people to hear, to hear me talking like if I'm at a light. It's awkward enough, like, if I'm at a light now with my window shut, but at least people might think I'm just talking to somebody on the phone. If the windows are open and it's summer and the car next to me has their windows open, they hear what I'm talking about, and it's just kind of weird and awkward, and I don't know. I know if you're listening to this now, then you're listening to this, but this is different. There's a context. You, you found this video on YouTube, and you're choosing to listen to what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's not like when it's being made live. It's a little more different. <laughs> I don't know. It's goofier. So, yeah, anyways, I thought I had so much more to talk about. Like I said, I've been thinking about this for months, possibly years at this point. Well, maybe not years, but maybe a year. Could actually very well be. It's almost November. It could be a a year I've been thinking about making this one. So, anyways, I thought I had more to say, but I guess I don't. (laughs) Which I don't really want to wrap it up now. I'd like to talk the whole time I'm driving, but I can't think of anything else to say. So, yeah. Um, that is all I got. So if you listen to this, thanks for listening to this. And hopefully, uh, you agreed with some of my points or maybe I opened your eyes and you're like, Oh my God, bikes are, bikes suck. (laughs) And until next time, I said, see ya.